Hey everybody, uh, just a couple minutes here. Uh, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. Um, let's see, let's let's start the show. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you? Uh, sorry, uh, good to see you, or not see you, but good to be with you. Um, today is uh, Sunday, February 16th, Valentine's Day weekend, and um, yeah, it has been a very interesting week. Um, very busy week and hopefully my dog has been going crazy uh barking at like anything that moves so i had to put a little bit of noise in the background because we had you know the, the house is just completely quiet and um uh <clears throat> and part of that is because uh those of you who might be joining um let's see there's uh there's a few a few joiners right now um but i'm just gonna have to solicit some prayers right now uh before we get rolling here um uh, asking you to to pray for my wife uh, ashley uh she is currently in the hospital she went in this this late morning uh just before noon and uh <clears throat> sorry if you hear some <laughs> some crunching in the background I had to give the dog some treats and stuff to try to try to get get her settled down and occupied. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so Ashley has uh, she is currently in the ER or not in the ER. She just got admitted into the hospital, and uh, and she um, is battling her typical kidney issues. Uh, if most of you know or, and are aware of, of our um, of our situation with uh, with her and her health issues and and uh, and her struggles and um, and but some of you might not be fully aware of you know of, of what she she goes through and she has a condition called modulary sponge kidney and that causes her to create and pass uh, kidney stones at a much higher rate than the average or normal uh, stone passer. Um, so, yeah, it's it's uh, it's fairly horrible, uh, you know, and it's a struggle for her, you know, because of her her quality of life is is affected, and and uh, you know she's uh, she's got the heart of a champion though she. Um, you know, she always you know, is looking to, uh, for the best ways for her to be productive. And sometimes that, you know, that, that heart and her wanting to contribute to the family and stuff, just, it sort of, you know, it, it tears her up. And, uh, so I'm um, just, you know, prayers for her to be patient and, and prayers, uh, you know, for her current situation and, <clears throat> and us being in Michigan, uh, the, the, the hospitals have pretty much shut down uh, any visitors uh, coming in. Uh, otherwise, we'd we'd be there now. Um, but uh, and and anyone under the age of like twelve or fourteen, they will not let you in uh, to visit unless you are there to be seen. And then even um, we were in the ER uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it. Um, there were some, there was some young, young children that needed to be seen and they even got turned away because of the, the flu outbreak and the flu epidemic. And, and it's, you know, it, it's, so it's, it's very, it's very difficult. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so just, uh, asking if you can, you know, just say a couple extra prayers, uh, for, for us today and in the, in the next couple days, uh, that we can get this resolved. Um, so I'll spare you the details, but yes, it's, uh, you know, it's, this has been a difficult, uh, episode for her, uh, and this happens quite frequently, you know, so, um, it is, it is hard on her, uh, on her body and her, 
uh, her heart and, and her, her, you know, her overall well being. It, it's, you know, it, it's just a struggle all, all the way around. Um, you know, and, and so we, um, we just continue to keep pressing forward and, and, uh, try to remain faithful, uh, to the gospel and, and, uh, to our, to our creator God, you know, and, and we do praise God for those moments that we do get that are, um, that are, you know, manageable and it helps us to keep our perspective correct as well, you know, cause, because it's, it's not easy, um, for us and for her, especially, um, you know, you always have to make sure that your perspective is, is, is in its proper place, you know? And, um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge and, um, but I mean, her, her heart and her attitude and everything that it's always an encouragement to me because, you know, I, I get to see firsthand what the heart of a champion looks like. And I get to see firsthand her mental toughness and her, um, her ability to to keep on fighting and to, to stay, to just to stay in the game. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's very humbling to me. And, um, and it, it, it causes me to want to push harder and, and, and be stronger and, and to be better for her and with her, uh, because she brings out the best in me. So, um, so, so babe, if you're, if you're watching, if you're happy to be watching right now, I, I love you to, from the bottom of my heart and, and, um, we will see you very, very soon. Um, hopefully and, Hopefully the doctors can get everything figured out. So I love you and you are the best part of me uh, other than our creator God and our Lord Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so with, uh, with that, so yeah, please, please keep us in your, in your hearts and prayers and, and, uh, and um, in the days ahead and, and, and today. So. Um, today, uh, I wanted to look briefly and again, anything like this, any, any of these things, it's hard to put anything in like an hour long video, even if we do go over, which, um, I, 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 I am not planning on today. Um, but if we do go over, uh, you know, I, I apologize, but this study in particular, and today we're going to, you know, we're going to dive into the attributes of God that are revealed to us through the scriptures. And these are things that we can look at and we can glean from the scripture. We can, you know, we're, these are things that are revealed to us by the scriptures. And these lists are absolutely not exhaustive because the, these are our attempts. These are man's attempts to try and understand God and not in a sinful way where we're trying to understand him in a fact of, of trying to become or figure him out in, in any way, but it's, it's for us to deepen our relationship with God. And that's really what this should do is because it should, it should bring God to a higher level in a higher perspective for you and for me as we study these things. And this is actually, this study itself is actually a, a huge piece of what is called theology. And theology is the study of God. So theos or, th or theo, theos is the Greek word for God. And then ology obviously is, you know, just like biology, the study of life. So ology is a study. So theology is the study of God. And this is considered um, a piece of theology that is, that's called theology proper. And that's when you're looking at the piece and the part of God and um, of God, the father. And there is, there's, you know, there's study of, of Christ and there's the study of the Holy spirit. 
And then there's all these subcategories of theology that you look at. And usually theology starts with a look at the scriptures because that is the first stop. And at least that should be the first stop for us in anything that we do. And that is where we should build our theology from. And you can see back here, there's, oh, I got this. Actually, I got this cool poster in the mail uh, from a supporter of uh, one of the ministries. And he's got his, uh, uh, his name is Vocab Malone. He's got a, he's got his own ministry. So I, I actually got this in the mail for being a supporter for X, X number of months. And, and there's the dog going crazy. <clears throat> but back here, you can see these are all books that are all this whole bottom, this whole bottom shelf is all books on theology itself. And there's a section in each one of these for scripture. There's a section in each one of these for, um, uh, I'm actually going to just look real quick at my, well, you know what? Let me show you. Let's do this. Um, so biblical doctrine is one of these books. And so here is, I don't know if you can see this, but the God's word, so bibliography, bibliology, sorry, and then God the Father, theology proper, and then this is what we're actually going to look at today, and this part is the attributes of God that might cut off, but but these are all different parts of the study of theology and they all have subcategories so it starts with god's word there's always a short introduction uh i'm not even going to attempt that word i've heard it said before but it's basically you know the rationale behind what uh theology is proleogamia is what i believe um uh I've, yeah i've heard it said a few times but i i can never catch on to that word and then the study of the word and then god the father theology proper uh, god the son christology and then the study of the holy spirit um man and our sin salvation angels the church and the future and that's that's a that's a basic breakdown of of the uh of the basic theology structure and there's scripture that is embedded in all of these things to show us how we relate to God and how these things relate to us. And this is our attempt to understand God. So those are the things that we are. Um, this is just one of the things that we're going to look at today. So <clears throat> the, the, the thing we're going to look at today is God's, um, attributes and basically these attributes are, are, are broken up into two separate categories. And, um, you might have seen the first, the first one actually is the communicable attributes, um, and, or incommunicable attributes. I'm sorry. Incommunicable, in, incommunicable attributes or perfections. And these two things are the, the first one is incommunicable. And then the other one are communicable. And basically those two words are just fancy words, meaning ones that we can, ones that we can communicate with are the communicable ac attributes. And then the other one incommunicable attributes are ones that we cannot, we cannot identify with. We cannot identify with these, these certain attributes. 
and because these are attributes that are unique only to God. And so for us to have these, we would have to be divine and we're not divine. You and I, we are not divine. So these things are things that we cannot identify with or relate to. So the first one is God's independence or the fancy word for it is his aseity. And it just shows that God is depend he's independent in all things, that he does not rely on anything else to exist. And he's perfectly self-sufficient. So, so here's for us as human beings, right? We have, we rely on, we rely on the air that God has provided for us. We rely on, even though these things are natural and they, they have come through natural beings, we still rely on water. We still rely on food. We rely on air. We rely on consistency of the atmosphere that we are in. We're reliant on the gravity that is pulling on us at a, at a constant level because all of these things have are in, they're put in motion by God, right? So all of these things are consistent and we rely on these, whether we know it or not. Otherwise, if we didn't, then we would die. So it's like pulling a fish out of the water. He is out of his element and therefore cease to exist because there's an inconsistency of the elements that he, that, that fish is in. Right. So the same is with us. So if, if God allowed any major, what to us would be considered major changes, we are bound by that and our existence would cease. But see, God does not rely on things around him. God does not rely on the, the, anything that is created or anything that is around him. And here are some of the things. So Yahweh, as as Yahweh, God is self-existent, having life and having life in and of himself. And here's some scripture verses. Oops, I need to change that. Uh, Things you overlook. Um... I'm not going to be able to give you scripture references to this because I I still have it on the Latin Vulgate. I don't know why I was looking at the Latin Vulgate uh, version of the, of the Bible. Don't ask me why. Um, So Exodus, Exodus. uh, Let me see if I have it on here. Okay. And then God said to Moses, I am who I am. And, and he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you to me. So that I am is when God says I am, he means literally, he means that I am the existent one, the everlasting one. And everlasting <clears throat> means from eternity past in, in correspondence to us, right? Because we have to constantly put things in perspective. We always have to put things in, in, in our perspective in order to understand these things of God. We, we have to put them in there in, in our perspective in order to understand it and rationalize it in our own finite beings, in our finite heads, brains, minds. And so we have to look at these things and and try to narrow it down to an area that we can focus on and then understand when it's really as wide as the universe we have to put it in a perspective that's that fits in this area right there and so for us to be able to understand it so 
God saying I am is he's literally saying I have existed. I just am. Whereas we can't say that we were born. We had, we have mothers and fathers and where God just existed. Now, do I comprehend that? No. And God's independence or his aseity literally is something that we cannot identify with because we are totally reliant on the things that God has made for us and the things that God has put in here for us to use as resources as far as the earth is concerned. So that is the best explanation <laughs> that I can give to God's aseity or his, uh, here's some other ones. God uh, existed before all things. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, this, uh, this book or this, these notes that I'm using are actually from, uh, from a book that I, uh, one of the theology books that I use, uh, called biblical doctrine. And, uh, and so these are the actual notes, uh, from that book. I have the hard copy. That's, that's one of the, that's one of the hard copies I have behind me. Um, so I was actually paging through that and then, uh, and then I have it on my Bible study software. So, <clears throat> so yeah, if you, I'll, I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description, uh, down, uh, underneath after I, I post, after it goes live, uh, or after I'm done with the live feed and then I'll, I'll put the, uh, and, and also to just a <laughs> kind of a shame, shameless plug, uh, all of these videos, uh, I, I also take them, download them from, from my, my interface and then I upload them onto YouTube. So all of this stuff is on YouTube, uh, even though these are live videos, um, and you know, it sort of doesn't fit the format exactly. Um, <clears throat> but for the time being, as I have time to do it, um, uh, started to watch party with the video. So, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not monitoring this stuff and I need to, that's just, that's something I need to get in the habit of is as I'm going live, I need to monitor it. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> Watching myself live. That's, that's weird. Leave watch party. Sorry. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, so all, all this stuff is on YouTube and, uh, you can, you can look it up. Uh, actually the, my YouTube, my personal YouTube page is the one that I've been using. Um, so, so this video has no sound. Okay. <clears throat> so I can see some of the, the live chat and the live, uh, I can, although I, although I can see it on here. Um, I still, um, I can't hear anything and I know the dog is coming, going crazy, but, um, but anyway, so, so God has existed before all things and through him alone, all things exist and the Lord is God of all. And you can, you can look some of these scriptures up or if you want me to stop and, and read any of these scriptures, uh, I can't, but there's a ton of them. Uh, and he, you know, he, God depends on nothing and all things depend on him. And that's a beautiful passage, which, oh, that's right. I can't do it. Latin Vulgate. And I can't read Latin. Um, so why were you looking at it, Phil? Just to be cool, I guess. <laughs> Um, Romans eleven thirty six for, uh, for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be the glory forever. Amen. And that's Romans eleven thirty six. So God is the source of everything and he does as he wills. Uh, his counsel is the basis of everything. He does nothing 
He does everything for his own sake. And that's a, that's an important, that's, that's an important understanding that we need to have of God is that, um, can you use translator online? Uh, I, I probably can, but I, at, at the moment, um, uh, Michael, um, shout out to you, by the way, my, my brother, Michael Gwynn, um, uh, I don't ha I don't know, um, how to do that, uh, at the moment. <clears throat> I, I do have, let me, let me try something here real quick. Let me try to, um, let me switch the settings here for a second. Bear with me if you can, please. Oh, where are my settings at? There we go. More options. Okay. Last open Bible. Actually, no, I want the English Standard Version with the... I want the Strong's, ESV Strong's. There we go. All right. That should fix the problem. All right, right there. So he is independent in his mind. So Romans, let's try that. There we go. All the depth, the riches, and the wisdom of the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscorruptible his ways. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Ephesians 1.5. He predestined us from for adoption to himself as sons through the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his purpose, his will, and the praise to the praise of his glorious grace. So he's independent in his mind, in his will, in his counsel, in his love, and in his power. Uh, the next thing in immutability. Now, this, this is something that is not, uh, some people have heartburn with this particular doctrine. And <clears throat> God's immutability literally means that God is, is perfect, unchangeably, in his essence, character, purpose, or in promises. And so God is eternally the same. And we understand that because <clears throat> some people have trouble with the fact that, you know, that there's the old Testament and there, there's the new Testament and they feel like God might have changed his mind or he changed his tactics or, or, or to something to that effect, which is not the case because obviously God knows everything. And we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, and we have to speed, we have to speed up cause it's already, uh, we've only gone through one. Now we're getting to the second attribute, but, um, but God is perfectly and unchanging ever. And <clears throat> one of the biggest arguments against this is that, well, they say, well, God seems like he's a God of wrath and he's just this big bully in the old Testament. And then all of a sudden in the new Testament, now he's the God of love, but you have to, you have to read the entire new Testament and you have to look at the old Testament and look at the purposes that God had and his focuses. So the focus of the old Testament was God was grooming his people, right? He was grooming his people to, to be ready for their Messiah. And they constantly were falling and then raising up. So, I mean, <clears throat> it's like, 
it's like how we have to be with our children, right? With our, when, with our children as they're growing up, we have to be right there for every moment, for every fall, for every, for every, everything that happens in their life. And we have to sort of maneuver them. And normally in their younger years, we're more strict with our children, right? Because we want them to know and understand what's right, what's wrong, what's okay, what's borderline, you know, this is how you are expected to act. Now in the new Testament, there has been a shift in focus because now it's not laying down the law. It is actually the grace and learning how to live in the boundaries of the law. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's a, there's, there's an ex, a clear explanation in, in the Old Testament of the law itself. And this is probably a horrible example. And I, I said last week that I'd try to stay away from examples, but this is the best way for me to explain it. And <clears throat> so our idea is, is that God was trying to establish the law and to show these people that they could not they could not fulfill it but yet instead of taking the that word they chose to try and fulfill it so now our our savior and the apostles in all the writings of the new testament tell us okay all right all right let's refocus this whole thing Instead of trying to fulfill the law and try to live by the law, the law is not gone away with. But the focus is, is let's not focus on every nook and cranny of the law, but let's focus on living within the framework of the law. So it's, it's, it's like in the Old Testament, they were in law school, and now they're just living as a citizen. They're not trying to know every, every little piece of the law but we we are still within the framework of the law but that see that's why Jesus wanted to get to the heart of the matter of of the the old testament law he actually strengthened the law because he said look if you even the 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 for it is written that if you commit adultery that you are against the law but he said let me tell you this even if you do that in your heart, if you, even if you look at a woman with lust, you have therefore committed adultery in your heart. So the, the idea is the matter of the heart. And that's where the, in the old Testament, they missed it. So it was sort of like, all right, let's just here, let's just wipe the whole board. All right. Now we got to start over again. It's, it's sort of that essence. So, um, God did not change his mind. God did not change according to his his purposes. So that's one thing that we need to make sure, uh, and I'm sure you can hear the dog in the background, <clears throat> but God is perfect and unchangeable in his essence, in his character, in his promises. Um, scriptural evidence is that he is eternally the same. So in Psalms uh, 102, of old you laid the foundation of the earth into the heavens are the work of your hands they will perish but you will remain and they they will wear out like a garment and you will change them like a robe and they will pass away but you are the same and your years have no end so god is the same he's the first and the last i mean we've heard that before uh, he is what he is. Um, he is incorruptible having Im, Im, having immortality and always remaining the same. So, and here's some of the questions. Um, we need to move a little quicker, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. So, Another one of his incommunicable 
<clears throat> is uh, has incommunicable attributes. And and if you're if you're looking at this, you'll notice that this one this says perfections, and God God's attributes are literally perfect. And that's one thing that we need to understand and we need to realize is that as we're looking at these things, we are we're seeing that God's attributes are perfect in their essence unlike us so we have we have attributes you have an act you, you have attributes things that stand out and make you you right so the same is with god <clears throat> but the thing is is that all of his attributes work perfectly and harmoniously with one another and they they are not bound and god does not use one attribute alone and god does not do things um out of anger in in our idea of anger right because the you know we all heard of you know we can we can lose our uh, you know if you if you make me angry enough i'll i'll lose my religion on you and but the the thing is is that that is coming out of pure anger or being upset with the current situation. And the, the thing about God is that he does not only act <clears throat> in one or two or even three attributes at a time like we do. There are times where we're overwhelmed, over, overwhelmed with love or we're overwhelmed with with anger or we're overwhelmed with an anxiety or all of these, you know, all these things that we would equate as emotions. But see, the thing is, is that God is not overwhelmed with anything. And so all of his attributes are equally pulling on him all at the same time. So God cannot, God cannot love without justice and God cannot have justice without love. And these are some of the attributes that, you know, that, that we'll see, um, later. And those are some of the, the, what are called communicable attributes, but God is infinity. So that this, this describes his nature, uh, in perfectly transcending existent and acting beyond all limitations, time and space. Okay. And then there's eternity. So infinity <clears throat> is literally the, the fact that God cannot even be, he cannot fit in space in our universe as big as it is. God can't even fit in that area. God is beyond that. He transcends that. And the eternity is literally talking about the time. So infinity is talking about his, 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 his vastness. And, and there's another one that is more specific to that, uh, as we go down. Um, but his, his infinity and his eternity are, are two things. So one is more how vast he is. And the other one is dealing with time. So here's some scriptural evidence for eternity. So you can see, I mean, the, the stuff that we're doing right now, like I said, is completely, um, completely, completely, and, uh, uh, just a overview, um, to these types of things, but I'm just, I just want to give you an idea and start thinking and, 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 you know, the more we think about God, the better, right? Because we need, because it's, it's going to provide us better understanding. <clears throat> and these are things literally, I mean, literally we need to think about these types of things because, and, and these are things that, that I sit and ponder often because how are you going to get to know your savior? How are you going to get to know God? And without actually reading about him 
without putting in the effort, right? So we've, we've just did Valentine's day and, and, and I've used this analogy countless times. But if you spent the time with your spouse or your significant other, you spent that same amount of time that you spend with God with them, would your relationship thrive? Would you, would your relationship survive? You know, would you, would you have a relationship? You know, if you, if you just only spent just a, a few minutes a day, or let's say you didn't hardly ever think about that person. You don't ever think about God, but yet you want to have a relationship with him. Well, you know nothing about him. You don't know any of his likes, his dislikes, his, the things that make him mad, the things that, um, the things that make him happy. Um, you know, we don't know anything about God, but yet we still, we, we want to, we want to pretend that, oh yeah, I have a strong relationship with God, but yet we do absolutely nothing to try to get to know him. Well, I mean, Phil, I, I pray. Okay. Yeah. But praying Let's be honest, the way that we pray isn't always the biblical way of prayer, right? Because we're constantly just giving God our th our thoughts or our wants. And is that really prayer? And that's something I think that we'll we'll go over maybe in the next couple of weeks is what is the biblical model for prayer? And there's a whole section in Matthew that, and everyone knows it. I mean, you, you, we, we probably have said it. It, the, it's, it's known widely as the Lord's Prayer. But I think, <clears throat> I think we take the Lord's Prayer and we take it too literally, because I think it was a model. And we all we do is just we robotically, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that's literally what it turns into in our head. It just turns into mush. We check out and we leave. And then, you know, and that's it. And we prayed. You know, that's not what prayer is. And, you know, so these are the things that we, you know, we need to look at. And then, but more than that was we need to know and understand God. And so that is the purpose. And that's the, that's the reason why I choose to do these things. And like I said before, it's not about views. It's not about, you know, anything else. I mean, my mission, my goal is to give you the best understanding that I have on the things about God in his word. And, um, so anyway, enough of that. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Immensity in omnipresence. Now this is probably my favorite attribute is that God is perfectly, perfectly present within himself, transcending all limitations of space. And this is what we were talking about, but this is a, a deeper understanding of that. Yet present with every point of space, with all that he is. So, you know, we think of ourselves as, <clears throat> or we think of, we think of it this way, right? I am currently occupying this space that I am in right now. So are you, you are, you are exactly where you're at and no person can occupy that space at the same time. And, but yet you are equally occupying that space, but yet <clears throat> imagine this, your entire being is actually where your leg is at. 
not just your leg, but the entire you, right? So all of your mass, so you could say, yeah, well, all my mass is there. No, no, no. The entire being all, however much you weigh, I'm not going to disclose how much I weigh, sorry, (laughs) but all of your mass is in one point that you, in the space that you occupy, every bit of it. Now we can't do that because in order for our mass to be in one tiny dot of space, we'd have to crush ourselves up and to a small little tiny molecule. And then all of us can only be at one place at one time. So I can only be here in front of the camera. You can only be there watching your smartphone or in front of your tablet or if you're a dinosaur on your com- computer, your laptop, no offense. Um, but you can only be in one place at one time. Whereas God is everywhere. All of him, all of his being all at one time. It sounds insane. It blows in my mind to think of it in those terms. Because how can all of God be in all space at one time, but yet occupy all of space at one time? It's impossible. Now, here's here's the beauty of this, though. Think of it this way. One thing, one misconception that has always been out there is that Satan possesses this attribute that Satan can be everywhere all the time. Satan is a created being. So I doubt, I truly, truly doubt that it was Satan that was in your front, your front, your front, bedroom or I doubt it was Satan that was in your whatever in your basement because Satan can only be at one place at one time and Satan does not possess the ability to be in multiple places at one time he doesn't even possess the ability to be in two places at one time so Mistakenly, many of us believe that Satan can see everything. But as you can see, that God is the only thing that is omniscient, or uh, excuse me, omnipresent. And God is the only thing that can be everywhere all the time, all at once. So he's the creator and possessor of all things. Heaven and earth cannot contain him. He fills up heaven and earth, and nothing is hidden from his presence. And he is both close and he is far off. He manifests himself. That's important, though. Number three is important. He fills heaven and earth, so nothing is hidden from his presence. So think about that the next time we sin. The next time we directly disobey the thing that we know and we have to suppress our conscience and we have to suppress the truth that we know that is inside of us. We know it's wrong, whatever, whatever it is. And whether we have suppressed it long enough to where it's second nature for us to sin, actually first nature, but it's gotten to a point where we know we're so we're no longer numb to it, but we need to realize that God is there in your presence. And there was this, <clears throat> there was this beautiful, um, there was this, this beautiful, uh, this little skit. It was super, super simplistic and it only required like three people. And <clears throat> There, one person played Jesus, the other person played a young person, and then the third person played another young person. And Jesus 
was basically with this young person that was constantly being tempted. And uh, the third young person would come over and he or she would say, hey, you know, let's go out and let's go out and go party. You know, and, and this is to, you know, this is to teach the the young people right and wrong or whatever. So, <clears throat> so it had its limitations, but let's go party. And so they would, um, he'd say, no, you know, the, the, the other guy who was being followed by Jesus would say, no, no, that's okay. I'm, you know, I'm good. All right. Well, fine. We'll see you later, loser, blah, blah, blah. And then they would take off and then it'd be, you know, another day. Hey, come on. Hey, look at this. You know, I, I got some, I got some marijuana or I got some grass. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go real quick. You know? And he's like, nah, I'm good. All right. Whatever, whatever punk. And Jesus is there with him. And then, you know, there was a third time. And then the, the guy or the girl or whoever would come and say, Hey, let's go and do this or and he'd say, no, no. And they'd, they'd keep on, keep on. And then Jesus was there with him. And so he's, he was like, all right, yeah, all right, let's do this. And Jesus was getting ready with him. Right. And then he was like, no, 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 you can't come. And Jesus was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm coming. You know, I'm, I'm with you all the time. He's like, no, 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 no. I, you know, you can't, you can't come to this. And so eventually what he had to do was he had to therefore then, you know, mimic as if he was nailing him to the cross. And so <clears throat> that is one of the truest things and the most, you know, most beautiful depictions of, of, of really what happens when we decide to, when we decide to sin, but realizing that God is there with us might help us change our minds. And there, there are certain sins. There are things that I, that I have struggled with in the past that I no longer struggle with. There are, there are personal sins that, that I have struggled with and I still do to this day. And I'm going to be frank and honest with you. Uh, one of those things was pornography. Pornography was, was something that I, I don't, I, I don't say I was addicted to it, but uh, it took a long time for me to deal with that sin. And it has gotten to a point where I have to, I manage it. And I, there were certain things that I had to do to make sure that I don't keep falling to that sin and, and keep, even though, even though in our society, even though there are many people who say, Hey, what's wrong with that? You know, no, God says, if you, if Jesus said it, and I use it as an example, if you lust after a woman with your eyes, that you are committing adultery with her in your heart. And so I had to, I was deeply convicted by that, but yet I still would fall to that sin. And <clears throat> so there, I mean, there were things that I had to do, you know, I would thought, and this was one of, this was one of the things that that helped me to realize that I cannot hide from God. Thinking about and pondering on these things and then realizing that God is everywhere, every place we cannot. There's a beautiful one in Psalms. Um, let's see. I wonder if this is the one. Oh yeah, this is the one. This I was actually reading this psalm, and this is this is actually the verse that can, the verses that can that actually help me to defeat that particular sin. It says in verse seven, "Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend, if I ascend to heaven, you are there." If I make my bed in shale, which is, which is hell, you are there. If I take your wings 
of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So there's, there's, he's, he's literally saying that there is nowhere you can go without God being there. But it's not only the accountability aspect. It's, it's beautiful because, yes, it has the accountability portion, but it also has a beautiful, beautiful portion of when we feel at our loneliest or our lowest or the or when we do fall and we feel alone he is there god is there he is there in your midst he is there with you and uncle ron in the house so weed is bad <laughs> is it a sin hello love and everyone in here today um Let's see. Hello, love, and everybody in here today. The nursing staff and Troy Beaumont Hospital. We are all watching. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I love you. I love you, baby. Um, Uncle Ron. So weed is bad. Is it a, a, a sim, he says, but he actually meant sin. <laughs> Just harass me a little bit, Uncle. Um, thank you, baby. Uh, we are all watching. And praise God for that. Praise God. Absolutely praise God for that. Um, we're praying for you, babe. Um, I call her babe. But uh, Mrs. Pastor Fox or Mrs. Preacher Fox or however you want to be referred to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... I asked at the beginning if, you know, if we can get some prayers and things. And if you missed that, if, you know, I know this is, we're getting to the, to the point and we're probably gonna have to do a part two of this because we're not even done with the, with, with the incommunicable attributes. And we'll probably have to do a second part with God's uh, communicable attributes and the things that we can actually uh, interact with God with. Uh, but there is a question out there, um, uncle Ron. Um, but yeah, so please say, please, before I move on, uh, please, please say a prayer for my wife, uh, Ashley Benjamin Fox. Uh, that's her Facebook page or for her Facebook profile, but my wife, Ashley Fox, um, uh, she is dealing with, uh, some kidney issues right now. Uh, so I pray that, uh, that, um, that those things get, uh, get dealt with. So, uh, hi mom. How are you? Miss Jody Breck, mom, Jody. Um, I know you guys are traveling. I don't know if you guys are home or not, but uh, say a prayer for their safe, their safe, uh, safe travels and, and on their way home. I know they were this, I think it was a senior program. I think from, from back home or we're out and about over the weekend. Uh, or are you guys leaving tomorrow since it's a long weekend? So I, I don't know. Um, anyway, <clears throat> uh, so I wanted to get to the, to this particular question. Cause I, I always want to answer questions that come up and, Uncle Ron in the house. So weed is bad. So, so yes, uh, my, my, as far as I understand, and that is something we can delve into too, is later on and maybe one of the questions and, and we can look at it biblically, but the short answer is no, weed is not bad. Alcohol is not bad. Now, all the the chemical drugs and, and all of these, you know, these street drugs and all that stuff. Yes, those are horrible for your body and they are bad. And the only reason to take any of those types of things are for it. They only serve one purpose, right? So again, not to be legalistic. And we, that's our goal. It's to not be legalistic because the Bible says that, 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 we are able to do all things, but not all things are profitable. So yes, um, anything can be bad for you. And so 
there are there are things uh persons hug to you all oh thank you auntie ladonna um and okay yeah so they're on the they're on the road um percent thank you this is my my aunt ladonna ladonna and hale um for me when i was growing up there was no prettier lady especially dancing uh because they used to come up from laura brule uh and this is when i was really young um uh and they they were uh my grandpa nate would go everywhere and my aunt ladonna was was and still is the most no, one of the most beautiful uh women that i've ever ever met in my life and especially i always remember when they would come up and she would dance so that I'd, I'd always be looking forward to them unfortunately i had to deal with her brother though <laughs> my uncle more like my brother uh rod uh rod hale and uh yeah so i had to deal with him and uh it was a love hate relationship, but, uh, we're, we're buddies now. Um, but yeah, yes, uh, they are on the road back home. So, uh, prayers for them and traveling. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Auntie LaDonna, I, I love you guys and, uh, and prayers for you guys down there, down South. Um, <clears throat> so, so getting back to the marijuana, no, it is not. It is not bad in itself. Now, uh, just like alcohol is not bad in itself. Now, see, Jesus, even Jesus in, in his time, uh, I was actually just just uh, reading a study on this. Uh, not reading, but I was listening to a study on this. And looking at the, what, what does the scripture say? So, so getting back to, to that point where everything basically is okay but not everything is profitable for us and so we need to understand that there are things that yes we can use for medical purposes even the apostle paul told told his helper uh, timothy to drink a little wine uh, to help his belly uh, because he had obviously had some stomach issues or something going on. So those things are and using alcohol and God obviously made it because Jesus drank alcohol. Jesus partook of, of alcohol. Now, uh, the, you know, the wine, but the thing is, is that the Bible clearly states that we are not to be drunkards or under the influence of that and that it's a sinful thing to be under that influence. So that can be applied across the board to any drugs and especially the ones that we view as profitable, right? So whether that's, whether that's opioid, I mean, we all, we all understand the big opioid epidemic going on right now. We all understand, you know, or, or for the long time, marijuana, oh my goodness, marijuana, the gateway drug, you know, alcohol alcoholism is rampant especially among our people because i mean all of these things they can they can they have the tendency to do something right they they leave you broke they leave you sick they can take control of your life right so but that that's not just the alcohol aspect it's really getting to the point of addiction. So whether that's gambling addiction, whether that's pornography addiction, whether that's alcohol addiction, whether that's uh, marijuana addiction, where you're going to do anything and everything you can to make sure you get your hands on it for that particular pleasure. And that's the heart of the matter. So again, getting back to how things used to be in the old Testament, they were focused on, look, you cannot do this because it's bad for you. Well, why? Well, just because it's bad and that that's not how we do it. Jesus said, no. And the apostle Paul said, no, look, you can do all things, but just remember that all things are profitable for you or not all things edify is what one of the translations say. 
So they don't all bring, bring in not just enjoyment because enjoyment's not the purpose, but it can bring blessing. It can bring, it can enhance you. It can, it can help you to, to be better. So like a medicine. And so that's, that's the idea of all these things. So the root of your question, uncle is no, marijuana is not bad in itself or weed is not bad in itself. And, and I'm sorry, I, I would just use the examples because like I said, uh, while I was telling the story is that, you know, these are just teenage examples trying to, trying to show right from wrong, you know, because we all know what the motivation is behind those things. Right. So that was, that was the purpose of it. Um, so, so yeah, so I, we we are an hour and five minutes now, so I think we're gonna have to cut it off there, um, and we're gonna have to come back to the attributes of God. Um, so, uh, if there's any more questions, or if there's any more clarity, or something that anybody else wants, or if there's any prayer requests, um, uh, please uh, go ahead and post or answer, you know ask those questions. Um, otherwise we'll, we'll close out the, close out the, the show here, but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I, I think we'll, we'll go through, there was a couple things that we, that I wanted to go, I'll have to look at the video and, and try to remember what it was, but, um, there was a couple of things. So the, the, the first one was, uh, I can't remember what it was. And then that, that'll be another follow up. And I also have the Judas the Judas study in work. Um, I didn't, I couldn't really commit to it this week. And usually when I can't commit to something, I sort of know that that might be God leading me away from, from, from something. Um, so yeah, I just, I could not get into the video or not in, even the videos of studying. And, and, uh, I listened to a couple sermons, but nothing was really, really hitting me very hard. And, um, so I sort of shift my focus and then realize that this was uh, supposed to be the topic for today. Um, but I mean, it's, it's important. It's important for us to, to know and understand, uh, God, because it's going to, it's going to deepen our relationship with him. Uh, Hey, David Boyd, uh, senior, sorry for being late. Yeah, we we're just sort of wrapping up now, uh, brother, uh, David Boyd is, uh, he's the, he's the pastor at a, at a small church in is it Brockton? I'm sorry. Uh, in Montana. And, uh, him and I have known each other for a lot of years. We haven't had a lot of interaction with each other. Um, but he has always been a huge, huge, uh, supporter. Uh, and I know he's been a prayer warrior, uh, for, for, for me personally and, and for the ministry. Um, I know he was uh, heavily celebrating when, when we uh, had been charged to take over the the Baptist church in Mandaree, when we pastored that church for that brief time, uh, but got out of the plans. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so uh, David David Boyd, and I seen that you had to cancel church this morning. So uh, so we'll, we'll pray that you. Uh, this might be something that you can do. I mean, you, you might be able to, uh, to start live streaming to your, um, to your congregation, brother, you know, some of this stuff. I mean, um, you know, you can, there's, I mean, this, this equipment and this, this type of stuff for, for my little studio here, it's literally just a, a little nook, uh, in our, um, dining room. And I literally have just one uh, camera and the microphone and stuff. I mean, you don't need all, you know, all of that, but, um, you know, just an idea. Yes. Since, uh, wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, since 1963 pastor in 1985. So, wow. That's, I mean, uh, praise God for men like you, uh, brother David, um, because, I mean, you know, I, I knew how difficult it was being even the assistant pastor at, uh, at Mandry first B 
and um, I can't imagine and talk about faithfulness because I know, you know, growing your ministry literally means getting five more people in the door. And I know how hard that is. So um, praise God. And, uh, you know, I, I think about you often and I pray for you often because I know how hard that ministry is. And just the, just the, the fact that, you know, many of our people are absolutely just for one misinformed and for two, it's almost, they are hostile to the gospel. And, um, because, you know, they view it as all these different things, a white man's religion and it has no place in our, uh, you know, with our people and, you know, those types of things. I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, I've had, uh, you know, very respect, respectful debates with, with some of my, even my own grandfathers. And, and I didn't, I did not do it disrespectfully, you know, and they sort of let me know in their own way, you know, I've debated theologians and I've debated, you know, these people, they're never going to change my mind, but that's not, that's not my goal here is to bad mouth any, any one position or, or, you know, or say that I am the ultimate truth and I am, you know, right and all this thing. But what I do know is that I have a conviction and that I understand and know that Christ Jesus died for your sins and mine on a cross. And he didn't just do it. He didn't just do it for the sake of doing it. He did it for a purpose. And he told his his disciples to go to the entire world to all the nations. And in the book of revelations, it says that every, every tongue and every knee from every nation will bow. So does that exclude the head people? Does that exclude the Blackfoot? Does that exclude the, the, the Kiowa? No. That, that doesn't mean that. It means every tribe, every tongue, every nation will bow and know that Jesus Christ is Lord. So tell me that's a white man's religion, a white man's gospel. It's not. It is the fact that Jesus Christ died for for your sin and mine and that he was rose again on the third day he was risen for the purpose to defeat sin. And because of that, you and I have an opportunity to either follow him or to deny him. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you what I believe is going to happen if you deny him. And I know what your objection is going to be. I know you're going to say, but Phil, how in the world do you, how can you, how can you say that if, if I'm going to go to hell and you're just going to go to heaven because, because I pray and I do all this stuff, that's the first thing. It's not about the things that you do. It's about the gift that has been given to you through Jesus. Listen, you're not the only one that stumbles with this. Our native people aren't the only ones that have to put aside their culture. The the average American today has to put aside their entire worldview, evolution. They have to, you know, the fact that we came from fish and that we evolved over millions and millions and millions and millions of years, they have to put that aside because they are taught that and understand and know that there is a creator God. That's just as difficult as you understanding and knowing about this God, about Christ and him crucified. There are, there are many religions in, in the Amazons, name it, Amazons in China, Muslims, Buddhists, all of these people. They're all deceived by the fact that they have to do something in order to attain heaven or what they say is heaven. 
That's the difference. That's the difference is that the true God, the one God came down from heaven onto this earth. And I know it's like a, it's like I beat the dead horse because I say this almost every, every live stream, but this is the purpose is what I'm giving you now is the gospel. And so the gospel itself says, and that's my, that's my only purpose and my only reason for all of this and for us to learn and to grow together. But if I don't preach the gospel, I'm not doing my job. And the gospel is not something that you and I graduate from. If you are a believer, you don't graduate from the gospel. No, the gospel is something that we need to repeat to ourselves every single day and realize that Christ died for us. Because if we forget that, we will then fall into sin and then negate in our minds and our hearts the sacrifice that has been made for us. So if we put aside Christ, or if we say, well, oh, I forgot about the gospel, or well, the gospel doesn't mean that much, then my goodness, we have missed the point. So with that, brothers, sisters, in Christ, preach the gospel, serve your king, and if you do not have Christ and you have not had that opportunity or if you have not bowed down to Christ yet, I pray that these words will fall upon your ears and your heart would become broken by the sacrifice that he, that God has given. And we have looked at some of the things that God in this study, just very few things, but we see the heart of God, how immense, how big, how massive God is, but yet he chose to send down and to come to us as a man. Because Christ is all those things too. All of the things that we looked at today, that is not only unique to God the Father, that is because God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all one in essence. And we can get into that study as well, the study of the Trinity. So with that, brothers, sisters, and those who have not yet come to Christ, I pray that this, that you do not miss this opportunity to come to Christ, to confess your sin, and to become born again, and to have Christ say to you, that on that day that you have been you have done what you had to do good and faithful servant or like the man on the cross when Jesus was there he said you will be with me today in paradise and i pray that you do not miss your opportunity that you don't miss that opportunity to come to Christ and to confess and believe in the gospel. So, brothers and sisters, and all of you watching, I thank you for your time. Blessings in Jesus' name. This is Phil Fox from Drops of Hope Ministries. Uh, Please like and uh, click the like button, subscribe, uh, I don't know all the, off all that stuff's on Facebook, but, uh, like I said, this, you know, this will be on, uh, YouTube as well. So come visit us on YouTube. So, uh, with that, have a good uh, rest of your Sunday. Be blessed.